Hi everyone, welcome to the seventh video of module three. And here we are going to go ahead and refine the rocket class that we are having in a way through which we can give more abilities to the users of that class to set up some of the properties of that rocket and also make it move in any kind of direction the way they want in whatever units. So all of these things we are going to do in this video. So let's get into it. All right guys, so let's just copy this rocket class that we are having and let's spice it up a little bit by having some of the modifications. So I'm just going to add a new heading over here and say that customize the existing rocket class. Okay. So what is that existing rocket class? I've already copied it. So I'm just going to paste it over here. Now, what is the current issue with this rocket class? Let's see if my user wants to create some bunch of rockets, all of them are going to be piled up at zero comma zero location. So I want my users to have this kind of ability. And let's say for simplicity, there are only two types of rockets. One that's needed to be initialized on 0, 0, and the other one that is to be placed slightly to the right of that 0, 0. For example, let's say 10, 0. So how can my user have this kind of ability where they can simply pass in this X and Y while they are trying to create a rocket object such that these are the properties that get assigned to it. So for that, I need to have an input argument from the user and where exactly you are going to do this in this constructor part. And don't worry guys, don't get confused. Constructor is just the name that we give to this init method. So after this self, which is actually giving you the reference of that object that you are dealing with for that object, what is that X and Y location where you want to initialize the rocket? So once you are having this X and Y, what do you want to do? You want to initialize the rocket on that X and Y. So the self X indicates that whatever is the object that you have created, its X location is actually the X that you have got from the user and similarly for the Y. So we have modified our constructor in a way that every time that user is going to give me some kind of X and Y, my rockets will be initialized on that respective locations. So let me go ahead and try this first of all, I'm going to run this code and create one more code cell and let me create one object. Let's call it rocket2 is equal to rocket. And now how am I going to pass this X and Y? It's going to be passed over here. So I want this rocket to have initial position as 10 comma zero. And now I'm going to print the location of this rocket too. How can I do this? I can say that I can again use this format st string where I'll be saying that inside this curly braces, I want rocket 2's x coordinate and rocket 2's y coordinate. Simply going to run it. It is 10 comma zero indeed. We can see that now we are able to initialize the rocket at any given x and y. Now what happens if I don't give any kind of inputs to this rocket? Let's see what's going to happen in that case. Let me create rocket 3 is equal to rocket without any kind of input arguments. It's going to throw this kind of a type error which says that in the constructor it is missing two required positional arguments that is x and y. So I don't want this kind of error to be faced by my user. So what I'm going to do is if my user by default is not giving some kind of x and y value, I am going to provide that default value to 0 comma 0. Let me just get rid of this. Yes, it's 0 comma 0. So now what's going to happen? Whenever the rockets will be created, if user forgot to give some of the x and y coordinates, automatically it gives this 0 comma 0. So let's just try it out. Let me run this code and let me run everything so that the changes are implemented to all of these rocket objects that I'm going to create over here. And also over here, I'm also going to print uh, the location now of this rocket three very quickly. So this is my rocket three dot X and rocket three dot Y. Oops. Yeah. I'm going to run this code now. You can see that now it's getting initialized at zero comma zero. So this is something that we have changed in the first place. Now, the second thing that I want to change is that the behavior of this rocket, whenever I call this move up, Currently what's happening, all of the rockets are going to move up and with the same type of speed, that is one unit every time that I call move up on that respective rocket object. How can I modify it in such a way that I can move my rocket in any type of direction, up, down, left or right. And that too, by whatever speed I want, let's say one rocket can move up, let's say, for example, 10 units in just one go. 
whereas another rocket can move let's say only by one unit in one go so how can i have this kind of abilities again i need to accept some of the input arguments in which i can have increments in the y direction as well as the x direction all the positive increments will allow your rocket to move up all the negative increments that is actually decrements are going to allow your rocket to move down similarly for the x the positive x increment is going to allow your rocket to move in that positive x direction in the negative increments or i should say decrements will allow your rocket to move left so how can i do this kind of changes first of all let me just get rid of this kind of comments uh, add a method that will make your rocket move in either of up down left right and right with whatever units okay the units are not fixed i'll allow my user to have increment of any value that they want so just like how we passed in this kind of initializing arguments over here that are nothing but for the attributes we can do the same thing for this move up kind of behavior i'll also change this to let's say move rocket so that it makes sense it's not always going to move up right so move rocket and after this self i'll give let's say for example x increment and then y increment along with that i want my y to move with that increment that is given along with that i'll just copy this and do the same thing for x I'm going to copy this give enter do this for x that's it my modifications are done i'm just going to run this code let's say i'm running this rocket 2 as well and rocket 3 as well now i'm going to let's say for example fire my rocket up by two units let's do that for example let's say rocket 2 dot move rocket what all kind of increments i want to give in x i don't want it to move in any direction in y i want it to move up let's say for example if i'm thinking about 100 okay let me just change this number and have a very high increment so if i'm giving this 100 over here and now if i check the location of this let's see what's going to happen remember initially it was at 10 comma 0 so that 10 should be there it should not get to 0 okay so 10 should be 10 and 0 should be changed to 100 now or whatever to be honest the value that you want it to move so if i go ahead and check it you can see that x is at 10 but it's also moving up by 100 units the same thing i can have with rocket 3 let me just copy this uh, particular part of print and uh, paste it over here and above that i'm going to take my rocket 3 and move that rocket let's say for example i am going to place it on minus 10 comma 0 now so how can i do this i want my x increment to be negative 10 and my y increment is going to be 0 in this case so now initially it was 0 comma 0 if they are not asking it to have any kind of speed in the y direction it is 0 but now i want to shift my rocket 3 from 0 comma 0 to minus 10 comma 0 so this is what is going to happen at least this is what i expect it to happen and yes that's exactly what is happening so yes guys what we have done so far is we have done only two changes one is in the constructor we took this kind of parameters from the users through which they can initialize the rocket at any given x and y the second thing that we have done is we have changed that move up behavior of this rocket to move rocket and this rocket can have increments in the x and y direction both and by whatever amount that a user want these are the changes that we have done now what again if user is not giving any kind of inputs to the move rocket it's going to again fall into some kind of error so to tackle that let's say typically your rocket is not going to move in the x direction and it can have y increment of one every time it is going to be called it's just some default arguments that we have given we can change it also according to our use case but yes this is something that i would so yes guys that's pretty much about how we can customize this existing rockets and to spice this kind of things a little bit where we are giving users some more abilities to play around with this rocket class and do some amazing things up from it so that was about how you can refine this rocket class in order to give some different rockets some different properties and make them move in a different way now in the next video we are going to add one more method so let's see what is that method and i'll catch you in the next video